Let's review some basic functions that we saw in module one because we are going to try to look for inverse functions or the concept of what an inverse function is. So let's say f of x is defined as f of x equals a, where a is any real number. So f of x equals 2. That means any input of x will produce output of 2. So what kind of graph is that? That would be this graph. y equals 2 then. The a would be 2. Doesn't have to be 2. What if I make it negative 2 or negative 4? Then I would have this graph, y equals negative 4. All that means is that no matter what the input, the output is always negative 4. So f of negative 2 would be negative 4. f of 3 would be negative 4. So you're always getting negative 4 as your output, which is a horizontal line then, as you saw in module 4. So domain, remember domain is all the inputs. So all the inputs, every x value has a y coordinate of negative 4 here. So domain, in this case, in generically for any a as real number, a would be the output for any input of x. So all real numbers is the domain. What about range? Range, no matter where you're at, you're going to have one point. So just a is your range. All right, let's take a look at whether it's one to one. No, it's not a one to one function because, in fact, infinitely many inputs give you the same output. So it is definitely not a one to one function. Some of you might say, how come I have a sad face there? The only reason I have a sad face there is because we want to study one-to-one -one functions, and this one is not. And the reason I would want to study one-to-one -one function is because of something called inverse function. Can I revert and say that x is a function of y? The answer is no, not in this case, because infinitely many Inputs are producing the same output, so it's not a one-to-one -one function. That doesn't mean non-one-to-one -one functions are bad. It just means for right now, we are looking for one-to-one -one functions to study. So f of 2 thirds equals 5, because we're saying f of x is 5. So any input produces 5 output. What do you think is f of 100? You try it. Good, it's going to be 5 because input of 100 produces output of 5, no matter what input is, uh, output is 5. f of negative 3456 also would be 5. What about f of a plus h? Again, whatever the input, output is always 5. So it's going to be 5. All right, let's take a look at the square root function. So we're taking square root of a number, which means that we have to restrict what goes in here. Because I'm looking for a real valued function, x can only be 0 and higher. So we have to put a restriction on this function. x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Otherwise, we're not going to have a, a real number output. All right, so how do we graph this? Remember in module 4, we said any time you want to figure out how a relation graphs, you can start, if you don't know how it looks, by plotting points. Good. So let's start with plotting of points and see what happens. So square root of 0 is 0. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. So if you plot a few points, then you connect them, and that will be your curve. So our square root function looks like this. Um, so let's put it to the side here so that we can do some other things with it. So take a very careful look at that graph, because we are now making sure that you have a library of functions, so you don't have to necessarily plot points. You have an understanding, a visual image of how it looks. All right, so what do you think? Domain is going to be 0 to infinity, because any negative number will produce an undefined output. So 0 is the lowest your x value can be. And then you can put any positive number you want and take square root of it. What about the range from the graph? Well, we can't have any negative output because square root of 0 is 0, and that's the lowest you're going to be. So again, 0 to infinity will be your range. And then what about 1 to 1? Do you think this function is 1 to 1? Well, if you look, any input produces one output. So yes, this function is 1 to 1. So let's uh, do some examples here. 
we have g of x is square root of x. So what do you think will happen if I wanted to input 2 thirds? So I would replace x with 2 thirds. And so 2 thirds is taking the place of this x right here. Can you see that? So g of 2 thirds is square root of 2 thirds. So g of 100 would be square root of 100 or 10. What about g of 3,456? Then that would be square root 3,456. All right, let's take a look at the square function. When you write f of x equals x squared, that is called a parabola. And we saw its graph in module 4. So let's go and take a look at how we can figure out f of x equals x squared graph. So let's plot a few points here and see what the graph would look like. So let's say um, 0, 0 squared is 0. So plot that. Let's plot 1. 1 squared is 1, so plot that. Let's plot negative 1. Negative 1 squared, 1 negative 1 times negative 1 is 1 again. So negative 1 squared is 1. 2, 2 squared is 4. What about negative 2? Can you plot on your own? Negative 2, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Plot. So you can see that if you were to connect it, it would be this shape. So here is our function y equals x squared, or f of x equals x squared. f of 2 equaling 4, which is the coordinate over here. So here is our coordinate 2, 4. So x is our input, 4 is our output. So f of 2 is 4. So just remember, when I write f of 2 equals 4, you are really looking for x is 2, y is 4. So for example, if I ask you f of what equals 9, how would you look for that? So that means what are we looking for? We are looking for x coordinate when y coordinate is 9. So let's go to y coordinate 9, which would be here and over and down. So that would be 1, 2, 3. So this answer would be 3. So if you are given the y coordinate, you have to look for x coordinate. If I gave you the following, then what does that mean? x coordinate is negative 3. Find the y coordinate. So we're looking for negative 3 as x input. 1, 2, 3, negative 3. Go up, and that gives you output 9. And so this output would be 9. So just make sure that you understand that if this is given to you and you're looking for that, that means you're looking for x coordinate. If this is the setup, you are looking for the y coordinate. And here, x coordinate is given to you. So ordered pair 2, 4, x is 2, f of 2 is 4, or the y coordinate is 4. All right, so let's take a look at the function and study a little more about this function. So our graph we saw was that. And so you can see domain is all real numbers. Any input squared will give you an, one output. And the range here would be 0 to infinity, 0 included, because 0 is the lowest you will get. And anything higher than that, we can get by uh, looking at the graph. You can see that. So range. The lowest it will be is 0, and then you can have any number higher than that. So range is 0 to infinity. What about 1 to 1? Is this function 1 to 1? We saw in the prior examples that no, it does not pass horizontal line test, so that function is not 1 to 1. So if f of x equals x squared, then f of 2 thirds would be 2 thirds squared, which you know how to do now. 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, so that would be 4 ninths f of negative 2, which would be negative 2 squared, or 4. f of 2 squared would be 4 also. And f of a plus h would be a plus h bracket squared. This is important. It's whatever is the input, the whole thing gets squared, which means when you multiply it out, you're going to get a squared plus 2ah plus h squared using the distributive property of multiplication over addition, multiplying a plus h times a plus h. 
Many students want to just say it's a squared plus h squared. But remember, exponents do not distribute over addition. So that's not going to happen.